A very good morning, uh, good afternoon and good evening my dear friends. Uh, welcome back to this TQM 1, which is the NPTEL uh, lecture under the MOOC series. And I am Raghunandan Sengupta from the IME department, IIT Kanpur. And we are almost at the fag end of this uh, TQM 1. So, we have another 3 lectures. So, today would be the 38th lecture, uh, which is basically for the last week, which is the 8th week. And as you have seen in the last 2 or 3 lectures, we have been discussing uh, quite in, in depth about 2 important concepts, which are a little bit more involved. The concepts of say for example, uh, the, the Kusum charts, which is cumulative sum of charts and the exponential moving average charts and the consequences and the reason why generally people are interested in using this. Before that, we did discuss in details about in the concepts of say for example, ISO of 9000, 9001, what are the implications for that, how ISO 9000 could be implemented, what are the drawbacks, what are the advantages, total cost expenditure, where the cost goes and all these things we generally discussed in an overall view for that. Now, continuing again coming back to the uh, exponential charts and the, and the cumulative sum of charts. So, we will discuss that in detail and they, there I will be discussing many things about the distributions per se. But having said that, I should also make a note and the student should be aware that the distributions what we shall consider would definitely be a part and parcel as a prerequisite for this course. I will try to explain that with concepts, but would not be going to the details about the derivations and, and trying to find out the expected value and the variances of these 3 distributions, which are a fallout of you trying to utilize, uh, fallout in the positive sense for a fallout of using a normal distributions for the case, when you want to try to find out the best fit or the distribution which is applicable when you try to find out the mean, given the standard deviation is known, finding out the mean, considering the standard deviation is not known, then trying to find out say for example, the standard deviation or the variance of the distribution, distribution I am talking about the population distribution, considering the mean value of the distribution is uh, known and in the second case considering the mean value of the distribution is unknown, then you find out what is the variance, the distribution of that, then you try to compare two different dis distributions with respect to the case. There is, there is some information set available related to the mean values of these two distributions. There is then, and then the next type of problems we also discuss and, and is heavily used in statistics in gen, general code statistics and there is a lot of applications also, where we try to understand what is the overall concept when we try to compare the variability of different type of, of, of the distributions and obviously considering the normal distribution is the basic distribution based on which we are trying to proceed. So, even though there was some digression in, in the topic from, from total quality management, but generally these type of distributions are very heavily used when you are trying to utilize them in the TQM 1. But do remember that when, when I was discussing the different of charts time and again, especially also in the last two lectures I mentioned that the concept of central limit theorem would always come into the picture such that we, we will be utilizing the concept of normal distribution, trying to normalize them and use the concepts in such a way that they give us very good results in trying to analyze the, con the different areas, the problems for total quality management and trying to draw the graphs, trying to find out the central line, trying to find the upper control limit, trying to find the lower control limit and all these things. Now, if you remember that when we were discussing the, the exponential moving average charts, uh, it basically gives in a very um, in, in a very general sense that I want to basically find out the value, whatever the value is. So, now I am going into, into in a very general sense of description, I want to find out the value of one um, random variable and or some, some predicted value which I want to find out based on the fact that the information set from the past, whether it is the t minus 1, t minus 2, t minus 3, they are utilized in order to predict or forecast the tth value. So, in when you are doing that and if you remember I had given examples about 
the um, uh, woolen clothes were being sold in the in the winter months in the month of uh, november december january given an example of north india delhi and adjoining areas or trying to sell different type of coolers uh, then uh, fridges and different type of um, um, equipments which are used to cool the temperature they are basically sold more in the summers so obviously you will have more set of informations see for example for the past data which are applicable to those case which means that if i am trying to predict for the sale of coolers in the month of may obviously the information more applicable for us would be the inf set of information which is happening for the month of may the last year or maybe see for example the month of april um, may or march april may the initial part of may obviously that would give us much better information when you are trying to predict or forecast the sale of these coolers now having said that if you remember that when we were when we are utilizing the concepts of um, uh, exponential moving average we said that uh, there would be some weights and the weights if you remember we also mentioned the sum of the weights basically adds up to 1 which means that if i am giving a, a 10 percent weightages for the values of x i given that we are trying to predict say for example for z i and z is some predictive value x is some actual value and consider we will give an a weightages of say for example 1 minus 0.1 which says that the sum obviously of the weights equal to 1 which would be 90 percent so 90 percent of the weightages would be given to the values of z suffix i minus 1 that means the last value so which means that z i minus 1 would have all the information based on what has happened on and on on the i minus 2 twth time period or t minus 2 time period whichever way you try to describe it will also have the information of the t minus 3 time period t minus 4 time period and so on and so forth. so obviously the weightages would change accordingly so the more you go back less would be the weightage based on which you will try to proceed and find out that what is the actual value of prediction now here um, a few things which i did mention as i when i started that there would be some digression digression not from the point of view of the the conceptual framework maybe digression a little bit from the total quality management but obviously it will give you a much um, a broader perspective how the concepts of so called loss functions predictions everything can be brought into the picture in order to predict in a much better way so if you see these graphs and then i will come to the description if you see these graphs basically they give you the exponential weighted moving average control charts based on the fact that the overall the central line and the upper control and the lower control would basically be found in such a way that they would be shifting obviously they would be shifting because if we if we have the set of points based on which you are trying to find out so obviously it would mean that we have a target value which is mu naught which in this figure is given say for example as 10 and obviously the ucl value and the lcl value would depend on how the exponential moving values are fluctuating so obviously in one case the exponential values would be fluctuating in the sense let me try to draw it so if i draw the y axis the x axis this is the central line so in one case technically if it is average for the p charts np charts x bar charts r charts we saw that was the average the straight line which was the lower control limit straight line which is the upper control limit but now these values did not take into consideration the weightages which you will give for the past data to what degree this you are trying to bring in the case of the exponential moving average which means that the values of the, of the lower control limit would basically slowly be asymptotic and basically be let me use a different color so it will be much easier for us to utilize so in this case the exponential moving average the lower control limit move, move exponentially i am trying to just pre, uh, draw it in such a way that in the asymptotic sense the value would basically become the actual lower control limit in the long term so if you see this the arrow which i drew just now would make sense that when it falls down now the steepness of the or the curvature of the fall would basically so the curvature of the fall which i mean by this 
would depend on what is the weightages you are give, giving. If a lambda is high, lambda is low, obviously the slopes would depend accordingly. So, in some of the cases, let me again draw it here on this main diagram. If say for example, the lambda values changes accordingly, so it may be a possible that the value of the exponential lower limit falls very slowly. In some of the cases, the lambda values are changes, they change, they fall very sharp. So, obviously, it will mean that the overall weightages which you want to give would basically give will be more or less filled with the information which is coming from the past. So, that that the 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 person who is trying to basically utilize the exponential moving average charts should have the information based on which he or she would take a decision what is the value of lambda. In the similar way, when I go on to the upper control line, let, so in the case when it is the upper control line, again it basically goes asymptotically and becomes straight along the upper control line, which is this one which is there. So, the level or the rate of change I am using the word of rate of change in order to make uh, us more much more comfortable in order to understand that how the values change as you take more and more observation and as you proceed to find out the tth value based on the fact of t minus 1, t minus 2, t minus 3, so on and so forth. Then you proceed to t plus 1 taking the values of t, t minus 1, t minus 2 and, and so on and so forth. So, in the case if the lambda values again will dictate how they go in one case it will be very sharp in another case it will basically very go very slow. So, this I should remove. So, it may be like uh, going very slow and meeting asymptotically in other case it may be very sharp going to the, the straight line which is parallel to the, uh, the control lines and the control lines basically mean the central control line which you have. Now, if you see the plots. So, these are the plots which you have. So, if you see the set of points, which means that as you keep changing the values of lambda for different readings, the change of this set of points for each and every reading like the ith 1, i is equal to 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, so on and so forth, which is the observation which is noted down here will give you that where the set of values for the data which you are collected and trying to find out there is a change. So, it may be either on an increasing trend which is here or it can be on a decreasing trend or the value fluctuation would be such that they are within that upper control and the lower control lines and then you will be able to take a decision whether they are assignable causes, unassignable causes, whether the process is going off out of control, whether you should take some corrective actions or whether maybe say for example, the humidity is high, the temperature is high, the workmanship is not that good or the raw material quality is not good or the overall process has changed. So, or the coolant has changed. I am talking about from the man manufacturing point of view. So, they would basically give you that information based on which you can take decisions that how the process can be brought back into control. Now, if you remember the the values of the upper control limit and the lower control limit. So, they had basically two terms. One, one, one was basically mu naught, mu suffix naught, which was basically the average um, uh, UCL, um, uh, the central line and the upper control and lower control limit was basically find, found out by adding or subtracting a certain um, amount or a number, which basically depend on these two cases. One is what is the level of lambda or what is the value of lambda, what is the overall um, um, importance you want to um, place on lambda and the second one basically being that how many such readings are you going to take later on. So, the more and more readings you take obviously, they would be smoothened out. So, if you remember in the last slide which you showed that in the asymptotic sense as you take more and more observations in the long run they become uh, almost parallel to the central line which is the send the mu naught value. Now, why that basically becomes the straight line is you will try to understand once you see the equations uh, carefully. This is what is stated. The terms 1 minus 1 minus lambda to the power <coughs> 2 to the power <coughs> i, i is the reading number and lambda is the value. So, if you see this 2 to the power i value would basically be increasing, but there is a negative sign. So, if it is increasing in, in the sense and you are multiplying with a smaller and smaller value, smaller in the sense if lambda is very high, 
then the rate of change of the function would definitely be different in the case when lambda is very small. That means, the weightage is based on which you are trying to multiply 2 i obviously, that uh, that is much much uh, more because lambda is less. But in the long run, whatever the values of lambda is, whatever the value it is greater or smaller, they would be considered in such a way that the total value as the number of observation increases, obviously they would be asymptotic in such a sense that they would give you the information that the overall addition part when you are trying to find out the upper control limit. So, upper control limit I will basically give you here. So, you have the upper control limit which is mu naught plus some L into something and the lower control limit was basically mu naught minus L into something. So, these values basically become a constant, constant I am writing as constant and this value also becomes a constant such that when you add or subtract this constant with basically they are straight lines based on the on the the series expansion of the fact that the values of i is increasing such that they become in the asymptotic sense uh, a fixed value. Which means that after the exponential moving average control charts had been running for several time periods, the control limits will approach a steady state value which I have been discussing for the last 10 minutes and they are like this. The upper control limit basically becomes mu naught which I have already denoted into L multiplied by a by a constant value. So, this is constant or the value which I just put in the in the curly brackets or, or the where I am just uh, now hovering my electronic pen. So, this value of lambda by 2 minus lambda in one in, in both the cases, but in the first cases when you are trying to find out the upper control limit it will be added, in the second case it will be subtracted they become const, uh, a fixed value. Hence, the upper control and the lower control values are straight line parallel to the central line which is mu naught. I am repeating in time and again please bear with me. Now, it will make sense why? Because if you see the actual equation when you are, when we have done the x bar charts, the r charts, the c charts, the p charts, the n p charts, technically the equation and also in, 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 in the Kusum charts later on in the asymptotic sense or whatever charts for different type of samples where the samples was n suffix i and they kept changing and you could basically incorporate that in when you are doing the calculation. The end result basically points to the fact of two things. Number one, the upper control limit is the, the, the central line which is C L which is the mu naught plus a, a constant value k. This k has nothing to do with the k which we discussed the, the last day which is in the 37th lecture. And the lower control limit value is the central line minus this k. Now, this k is basically dependent on only one thing. Technically, I, if I go into there, basically it will depend on two things. Number one, what is the standard deviation, which is sigma or the best estimate of the standard deviation. And what is the level of confidence you want to place on your readings. So, if again, now moving back to the normal distribution again, which will now make much better sense is the normal distribution is a bell shaped curved. And if you look at the central line, the central line is the mean value, the median value and the mode value. And if you are looking from your side, on the right hand side the values increases and goes to its infinity, on the left hand side which is my right hand side it will go towards minus infinity. So, for any dispersion which is happening of plus sigma and minus sigma, the overall coverages which are symmetric would be about 67 percent. If you are basically covering plus and minus 2 sigma, that means the 4 sigma 1, the overall coverage would be about 95 percent. And if you are basically trying to go for the 6 sigma which is plus 3 sigma and minus 3 sigma, the overall coverage would be about 99 percent. The fact remains that here also the slowly the central limit theorem comes into the picture where the overall quantum of addition of subtraction of the sigma value which is the standard deviation or the dispersion whatever you consider would depend on the level of confidence you are trying to basically place on your reading such that the upper and the lower control con lines would basically be further apart if the value of k is higher. So, the k which I have just uh, noted down where I am just hovering my pen. So, k is basically a multiplicating factor of sigma into some constant 
consider that is k1. So, the k1 is higher or lower would basically dictate that the difference between the upper control and the lower control limit would be much higher. If k1 is very small, obviously it would mean that the level of, of, of confidence which you are putting between the difference between the upper control and the lower control limit would be smaller, which means that if to before I, I, I speak further, let me remove this, uh, this equations which are drawn. So, it will be much easier for me to draw the diagram. So, here the straight line which is the y axis, the x axis, the central line in one case. So, let central line let it be blue. In one case, the upper control and lower control are like this. So, they are equally dispersed. So, the graph is like this. In the second case, if the upper control is here, lower control is here, then the overall coverage is would be as shown. And if it increases to 99 percent, just trying to differentiate if to use the red color, it increases, increases. So, this x axis is just drawn for a um, sake of, of nomenclature to understand. So, in the first case, the overall coverage is this. In the second case, let me go back to the green color is basically this and in the third case, if I ye, the initial where we started from is the blue one, this is this. So, if I use the black one now to denote, in the first case, the overall coverage would be say for example, k 1 sigma plus minus in the second one it will be k 2 sigma. So, this k 1 k 2 has nothing to do with the small k which we considered the last day for the cosmo and the exponential charge. The third case it will be k 3 sigma. So, the values of k 3 k 1 k 2 k 3 would depend on the level of confidence or the breadth or the difference which you want to be there between the upper control and the lower control. Now, you remember in the in the case of the exponential, again I am repeating in the upper control, lower control would again asymptotically in the long run as you take more and more observation would be a straight line parallel to the central line. In the case when if you remember uh, like in, in quite long time back in this set of lecture series, we consider the, the changing in, in uh, sample size. So, obviously, the, the sample size is changing in each observation, the upper control and lower control would basically be small dashes for those set of points and they would be shifting depending on what is the n i value for that i th reading. So, obviously, that would change, but we saw that we can take the average value of n consider it as n bar and do the calculations accordingly. In that case, the upper control and the lower control line would basically be constant. So, coming back to this, this means that I am reading re re -reading the second point. This means that after the um, uh, exponential weighted moving average control charts have been running for several time periods, the control limits will approach the steady state values, which is the asymptotic one. And the steady state values for the upper control limit, limit is given by mu uh, suffix naught plus L sigma into that square root term, which would basically change depending on the level of confidence which you have and also it will change depending on the weightages you are trying to give for the past data. And the lower control limit again would basically be the mu naught minus that value. So, uh, they are equally dispersed. So, obviously, it would mean that uh, you are giving the you are slowly trying to inco incorporate the concepts of normal distributions in this case, where uh, if you look at this distribution which are turned 90 degrees and they are um, vertical, the dispersions are equally um, uh, of equal quantum both on to the lower part going towards the lower control line and going upper towards the upper control line. So, the third point, uh, fourth, third point says for better performance for small values of i, the earlier mentioned equation should be used in the sense because if i is small obviously, you will try to utilize the actual equation. They give you much better results, but if you are trying to utilize it for a long time, so obviously those uh, in, in the asymptotic sense those basically uh, the constant values are, are in place. Hence, the positive and the negative values which you use to find out the upper control and the lower control are fixed now. Now, design parameters for the exponential weighted moving average control charts. 
the design parameters of the controls are the multiple of sigma used. So, this is what I was mentioning. So, you have sigma and with sigma basically you multiply a function of L. So, this function of L would basically depend on the lambda value in this case or else in the other case for the uh, upper control and lower control values for the x bar charts or the r charts or the p charts they would be a constant term. So, it would not depend on the assumptions of lambdas because lambda would not be considered in those in those cases. So, the design parameters of the charts are the multiple of sigma used in the control limits L and that value of, of the sigma which you have already considered. So, it is possible to choose these parameters to give the, the performance index um, for the control charts which is exp, um, which is exponential weighted moving average that closely approximates the Kusum's performance index for the detecting a small shift. So, now why we have been discussing this Kusum charts and the exponential moving average charts is basically those small detections for very small change of values are easily applicable and you can find it out very easily. So, if you remember we have considered the values of capital L small uh, capital H small h and then depending on the values of C plus C minus or N plus N minus. So, those plus and minus are basically on the suffixes they give you the number of times they have already crossed the limits and where the change point occurred. So, in this table it gives the average run for the several um, expected um, for the exponential weighted moving average control schemes. So, if the shift in the mean which is basically multiples of sigmas are given on the leftmost column and depending on the values of L and lambda you have different um, uh, values of the of, of um, uh, average run lengths are given for L is 3.0554 and lambda is equal to 0 0.4 you have the value starting which is in the second column from 500 to 1.4. Then when the values of L is 2.998, 0 0.25, then 2.962 uh, and the lambda value is 0 0.2, then L value 2.814, lambda value 0 0.1 and last L being L is equal to 2.615, lambda is equal to 0 0.05. You have all the sets of values which gives the average run lens for several of the exponential weighted moving average depending on the shift in the mean which is basically multiples of sigma. So, we will continue discussing there and thank you for your attention, we will we'll go into much more details about the exponential moving average and then try to give examples for different type of distributions also in the 39th and the 40th lecture. Have a nice day, thank you very much.